fly in the sky I can go twice as high Take a look, it's in a book A reading rainbow personality thanks it's a disorder i love this man and i have to have him but i was only 17. if you want to stop me you're gonna have to fucking kill me this is a great question and the answer is that i am annoying <laughs> all but well sir all but well too much sad I an itching palm. Out, oh, damn spot. Now is the winter of our discontent. What's it a name? Some wine, ho. All the world's a stage. Off of his head! Exit proceed by a bear. To be or not to be. Yeah, heaven help a fool falls in love. What? You fuckers. You fuckers. You motherfucker. I will rain hellfire upon you. The woman was too stunned to speak. You're asking me about my theories? I've waited years for someone to ask me about my theories. Hang on. I made a model. Wait! What is the tea? The girls are fighting! No! <laughs> it's Shakespeare Tuesday Tea Time, and we're talking about Henry VIII as Tudor propaganda. Okay, so Henry VIII makes for a really interesting case study for a history play because it's written really relatively close to when the events actually took place because he's writing it during the reign of Elizabeth, and it's about her father, Henry VIII. And so, it's a little bit recent, so issues in this play are potentially a little bit touchy. He has to be very aware that he doesn't want to say anything to offend the queen and talk bad about her dad, but at the same time, Elizabeth didn't like her dad because he, her mom. So I don't know, the play ends with Elizabeth's birth, so he doesn't even get to half of his wives. Like, Henry VIII is arguably the most entertaining monarch in English history, but this play is boring. I said it, and I stand by it. It's boring. If you want to read a better play about Henry VIII, read Wolf Hall. It's boring. It's Shakespeare Tuesday Tea Time, Ides of March edition, and we are in fact talking about Julius Caesar today. I wore my Shakespeare shirt and I'm drinking iced tea out of my mug because I'm in Texas. Happy Eyes of March, everyone. Okay, so this one makes for a really interesting study because it's not directly catering to the monarchy, but it is a direct reflection on Shakespeare's and I guess the greater England's anxieties surrounding the time period. And so it's written in 1599, Elizabeth dies in 1603, so she's getting old and her, her health is failing at this point. And there's a lot of anxiety in England concerning what's gonna happen when Elizabeth dies. At this point, she had been on the throne for like 42, years, which is insane. People didn't live that long back then, and so that's a significant amount of time of stability, at least in the monarchy, for England. And so Elizabeth the Virgin Queen doesn't have an heir. She hasn't declared an heir. She doesn't have any children. Who the heck is going to take the throne after she dies? And so there were threats of rebellion happening, similar to what happens in Julius Caesar. And so this play is written as a direct reflection on socio-political anxieties surrounding this at the time, and that's really fascinating. That is, in fact, the tea. It's Shakespeare Tuesday tea time, and today we are finishing off the monarchy series by talking about Macbeth and King James. Of all of Shakespeare's plays, Macbeth is easily one of the most catered to the monarchy. I mean, it's literally written for James I and VI of England and Scotland, the Scottish play. I feel like that, it's, that just tells you everything you need to know about it. It's also short because James was known to have a short attention span, and two of its major themes are treason and witchcraft. With regards to treason, during James's reign, an event called the Gunpowder Plot happened, and so 
They tried to blow up parliament, but like they didn't, obviously. And so, treason. If you're a king, I guess that's always a major anxiety of yours. But also witchcraft. So James had a couple of like bad encounters with weather while traveling. And he, as one does in this period, attributes this to witchcraft. And then he writes a book called Demonology About Witchcraft. And so, this play just really is a treatise on socio-political anxieties in the Jacobian period. Also interesting factoid, it was widely believed that James was a descendant of Banquo. Like you can go back and look at the family trees and trace it back to where this discrepancy comes from. And so like Banquo, who sires a line of kings, is now attributed to being an ancestor of James. So like right play for James. I wrote a paper on this. I have too many thoughts. That's the tea. It's Chase for Tuesday Tea Time. I'm in New York City for my senior showcase. So we're taking a brief hiatus from the Monarchy series. Um, and my tea for today is that I am severely sad that I'm missing the Macbeth revival by all of two weeks. Boo. It's Shakespeare Tuesday Tea Time, and today we're starting a series about Christian misogyny in Shakespeare. I think my hair just went into my tea. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, all right! Christian misogyny in Shakespeare, woo! <laughs> Said no one ever. This is one of my favorite things to talk about in Shakespeare because there is so much to say about it. I wrote a really long paper about it last semester. So this is going to be a very many part series. I'm going for a while, but comment which women specifically you wanna talk about because there's a lot to say. So basically Christian misogyny is going to be broken down into two ideas, two avenues that women figuratively are either going to be put on a pedestal and worshiped like the Virgin Mary, or they're going to be burnt at the stake like Eve, responsible for the fall of man. In literature, specifically dramatic literature, this is going to manifest in stereotypes, like you're either gonna have a virtuous ingenue or you're going to have a vixen who is a temptress. Let's get started. Love your personality. Thanks. It's a disorder. Is this turning into maybe a near-death experience? Possibly. Does this add to the adventure? Absolutely. If you want to stop me, you're gonna have to fucking kill me. How many people were scared? Me too. I was really, really scared. Say, say that we got it. I'm a mess. Yes, you want to know the difference between us? I have class and you don't. Story time. So I was with my mom this week in New York and <laughs> she's buying something on Amazon, right? Going through like, and, and of course what pops up on like recently searched for you, maternity dresses. And she looks at me and she goes, are you searching for maternity dresses? No, Deborah. no, I'm, Yes, I was, but not for the reason that you think I am. I am a theater major, and sometimes I have to buy weird things for photo shoots. I was just looking for a very flowy white gown dress, really cheap nightgown thing. Maternity dresses. They check all the boxes. I am so sorry to be a disappointment to you, Mom. Yes, you want to know the difference between us? I have class and you don't. <laughs> no, no, but it's not funny. <laughs> At the end of the day, is it? It's serious. We can you shut up! I'm so fucking scared right now, you shut up! Are you doing this? No, I'm doing this! I don't wanna die, I don't wanna die, no, I'm not a liar. I'm gonna start a riot, I'm so fucking tired. I do not have time for this. I do not have time for you. That's a real quick no. That's a hard pass. Absolutely not. Very uninterested in that option. <laughs> 